Sheesh. What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are having an amazing morning. I'm just getting mine started. But you guys saw the thumbnail and you saw the title. You're probably asking yourself, Thick, why are you getting another custom tune by a different person if you already have one? with Carrie Jordan. Generally, you guys, I make these videos out of necessity. So when I went out there to find my first custom tune, my custom tuning experience for the first time, I went on Google and I was searching for reviews with the N55 Carrie Jordan tune and the F80 Paul tune. There was a lot of discussion on the forums talking about each tune and whether or not that person individually decided that they enjoyed the tune and the experience through that person who tuned their car, whether it be Carrie Jordan or Paul Johnson, whomever. There was, however, very, very little content, especially in video format, on these tunes and the entire experience. I had a lot of people when I got the Carrie Jordan tune DMing me why I didn't go F80 Paul and vice versa. I think if I would have gone F80 Paul first and I announced that, there would have been a lot of people saying, why didn't you go with Carrie Jordan? So people had a lot to say about each tuner, but they really didn't give me any reason as to why I should or should not go with a specific tuner. They just said that so-and-so is the best, <laughs> which I wanna know why. I wanna know why they're the best. So there are obviously a lot of reasons as to why I make these videos for you guys, but sometimes it's all about the experience that we have through different parts or tunes or anything like that. And if I can share that knowledge with you guys, then that's really where the value in the content comes from. So we did the Carrie Jordan tune, still have it on the car, love it. Think it's a fantastic tune. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm not making these videos to like pit one tuner against another, to be honest with you. I think they're very similar, but I don't think there is a lot of content out there kind of giving an in-depth experience on each tune. Every tuner has their own way of going about tuning cars. Every tuner has their own goal when it comes to tuning each car. And I wanna share that experience with both of these tuners with you guys, so you can make your own decision. Which tuner is right for you? Maybe neither is right for you. Maybe you're just an off the shelf kind of guy. And I think a lot of people, that's where they're gonna fall. Because the off the shelf map really isn't that bad. But if you're looking to get more out of your car, you need to go with a custom tune because it's specifically tailored to your vehicle. The modifications that you have, the fueling that you have, the goals that you're trying to obtain, all of this stuff comes into play when the tuner is tuning your car. So I quick wanna preface this video with the fact that you do need a boot mode license. So you can't just go on Keys Motorsports and order the tune and think that you're just gonna get it without having an actual boot mode license. You either need to buy the boot mode tune or the boot mode bundle so you can get a actual boot mode license and then you can go ahead and purchase the custom tune by either Kerry Jordan or in this case F80 Paul. I can kind of show you guys the experience that I've had thus far with this tune. Um, it's a little bit different in the fact that each tuner uses their own methods for communicating. So Kerry Jordan uses the boot mode app to communicate. You basically comment back and forth in this thread with Kerry Jordan. You tell him when the logs are done, he goes ahead and takes a look at them. Paul Johnson actually has his own website portal where he does all of the, the commenting and updating for the maps. I don't really think that either one is better or necessarily worse. I do think that it's nice on F80 Paul's website that when he updates the tune or has anything to add or any suggestions, it all goes to your email so you're notified. With the boot mode stuff, whenever they add a comment, you're not notified. So I was like continually checking to see when my new map had arrived or when like the new map was ready because when you add comments in the boot mode portal, you don't get notified in any way. You don't get like a notification from boot mode, you don't get an email, so you're just continually checking, which is kind of like, kind of silly to me. I like the fact that with Paul Johnson's tune, when he's updating things, it goes directly to my email and I'm notified so I know, okay, cool, now we can flash the next one or he needs more info from me or whatever. So just like the past video with the tuning experience, at the end of this, I'm gonna give you guys the full timeline. So when did I actually purchase the custom tune to when did I get my first base map to when did we do the first revision, how long all this took. I think timelines are really important when it comes to custom tunes and people wanna know how long it's gonna take. So these timelines kind of help people decide 
whether they wanna go with Kerry Jordan or just do an OTS that has no delay or do a Paul Johnson tune. As far as the data logs, if you guys remember in the Kerry Jordan video, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hop in the car and go do some data logs. On Kerry Jordan's tune, it was three pulls in third gear from like 2,000 to 7,000 RPMs. On Paul Johnson's tune, it's a little bit different. It looks like he just needs one pull in third gear from 2,000 to 6,500 RPM, shifting into fourth and then shifting into fifth. So going all the way back up to 6,500 and fourth, going all the way back up to 6,500 and fifth. So you're kind of running through all the gears so he can see how that top end is really performing. I know that there's gonna be a lot of talking, you guys, in this video, and so I apologize ahead of time. Some people just hate that, but there is a lot of information that I wanna make sure I'm very clear on all this stuff for you guys. The last thing that I wanna to touch on before we flash in the base map is that Sometimes the goal isn't always to just have the most power in these cars, it's to have the cleanest power. We kind of already know where the limits are with this M2. It's N55, stock fueling, stock turbo. We're kind of at the max. Like the fuel rail is already sort of dipping. You guys know that I'm doing a meth kit soon. I ordered snow performance meth kit, so we're gonna be doing that soon. That will give us maybe a little bit more or the car will be able to run at cooler temperatures all the time. But what I wanna get across is uh, anytime you're doing a custom tune, the goal isn't always to try and get as much horsepower as possible out of the car. Some people might want that on some builds. That's definitely not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to get the cleanest power out of this car. So when I look at the graphs, I really want a clean torque and power curve. That's what I'm going after. Does the car feel good when you're driving in all scenarios? Daily driving around town, just cruising in low RPMs, when I'm like out there racing or I'm tracking or anything like that, how does the car perform in all levels? That's really what's important to me when it comes to a custom tune. I really want like the cleanest delivery of power. So that is what I personally pay attention to. Obviously we want, we want good power numbers. Like you wanna get a little more boost out of the car, but you wanna do it safely. And you obviously don't wanna blow your engine. You don't wanna blow your turbo. What I'm trying to say is you guys, I know my limits with this car and I know that I'm pretty much at that limit right around like 410, 420 is probably the most we'll see out of this car with stock fueling. And I know that there's gonna be some people saying, oh, I got 450, that's fine. I don't, I don't want 450, not on this setup. I know exactly where this car should be and can be um, at a reliable level to where I know that I could drive it like this for a long time and not have any issues. And I feel like we're pretty much there. So what we're looking for now is to really just clean up that power delivery. All right, so you guys know the deal. When you're flashing, you gotta have the seat belt fastened. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so we just turn it into accessory mode, turn off the air, got the lights off. The way that I prefer to do this is I just put on my hotspot on my cell phone, and then obviously we have our OBD2 Ethernet cable running that to the laptop. So I'm still doing flashing with the laptop because I just feel like for the purposes of this video, it's just easier to record and easier for everyone to see when I do it with the actual laptop versus the phone. But you can do this uh, via boot mode app and you can use a phone to do it. All right, so like I said before, you have to go ahead and buy a boot mode license. If you already have like a bundle or a boot mode tune, like an OTS tune, then you have a license and you're good to go. If you do not have one of those, you need to have an actual boot mode license in order to do this. And then you would go ahead Go on to Keys Motorsports website, use the link down below, and actually get the F80 Paul tune or the Carry Jordan tune or whatever you're doing. So it is like $1,100 for the whole thing. It's not just like $600 and you're all set. Once you've made your purchase, you're gonna wanna go ahead and go into your boot mode portal. And if you look in here, you have all this stuff, My Maps, OTS Maps. We're gonna go to My Maps, and then you go to Request Custom. And then what you do from Request Custom is there's gonna be a list of all of these different tuners, and you can actually decide like who you're gonna go with. Um, it'll say F80 Paul or Paul Johnson Tune. You go ahead and select that and then send in your request to Paul Johnson. Then they will email you back and let you know that they are processing your request, making sure that you are actually the person who bought the tune. They will then verify the purchase, match it up with your car and your username, and then you will get your first base map. So like I said before, um, Paul Johnson has his own portal. So you actually like get an email from Paul Johnson and all the information, all the instructions are gonna be in your email and then he will go ahead and send you your base map so I'm under maps right now all my maps I have my stock my stage one my stage two my CJ map my Kerry Jordan map my Paul Johnson map and you can see down here it says 
flash ready. After you guys do the initial flash of unlocking the DME, it's really, really quick when you tune your car in the future. Like when you flash in the future, it's really, really easy. So he has comments here in the boot mode portal as well. Uh, base map ready to flash. As I make revisions to your custom tune, you may receive uh, messages from my associates, yada, yada, yada. Please data log on safe dry pavement using boot mode with traction control off. So both tuners have asked uh, every time I've done a data log, make sure that all traction control is off and it's going to be wide open throttle you're going to begin at 2000 RPMs in third and then manually shift into fourth, carry that all the way through to 6700 RPMs, then shift into fifth all the way up to 6700 RPMs, if you can safely do that. So the idea here is that he wants you to go from basically 2K RPM in third, all the way through third, all the way through fourth, and all the way through fifth. So you need a lot of room, a lot of straight road, and obviously at least amount of traffic as possible. I like to do data logs like super early in the morning out in the middle of nowhere. Um, they do say if you need a assistance with data logging, you can go ahead and reach out to them. Um, we've done that before, obviously on here, it's very simple. They also talk about down below how they've moved everything over to their own site, so you don't need to update or do commenting on here. So I actually kind of like that because like I said before, you get notified every time that a new map is ready or there is a comment added. On here, on the boot mode portal, you don't get notified. So I don't know if maybe that's like a settings thing. Uh, you guys can let me know if I'm wrong, but you don't get notified. So when I initially did the Carry Jordan 2, and I was like continually just updating my boot mode app to see if a new map was ready because I just had no way of knowing. Um, this is obviously my base map, so there are gonna be some uh, revisions, obviously, like that's just the way it goes. Your base map is always just gonna be like a rough starting point, and then from there on out, you're gonna be doing a lot of different revisions to fine tune it. Success, so we're good to go. This flash, you wait five seconds, then you can go ahead and start the car. So this is kinda how I like to set it up in here. Um, I have my phone and then my ethernet adapter. It goes to my phone into the OBD2 port down below. So basically, I'm just running boot mode on the phone for data logging, and you guys will see a screen in the top right um, that will show all my values while we do this. And then I'll actually put up the data log graph once I finish. I forgot to change my configurations. So I actually switched over my, my burbles to OTS, and then I turned off the check engine light for the catalytic converter. Um, two things that I totally forgot to do. So before you flash, make sure you go into configure. This is the first time flashing using the phone though. Kinda cool. Very easy. I think it makes way more sense to use the phone than like break out the old laptop and try and do it all like that. So the burbles are really quiet too with uh, the Paul Johnson tune. You do that like OTS setup, super, super quiet, which honestly I prefer. Um, but if you guys wanna get like rowdy and wild, you can go in there and actually just customize the burbles for yourself. For me personally, I like to keep it minimal. I'm really not into like the extremely loud burble setup anymore. All right, so I've just been doing a little bit of driving around and it feels, feels really good. I've already seen 20 pounds of boost on the, uh, on the data log, so I know that we're we're about 20 pound boost area. So we gotta find a way to get in a third gear through fourth gear and fifth gear um, pull, basically. And uh, I'm gonna do it right here. know the drill um, we finished up the logging process so basically now I just go into my portal on the F80 Paul site the Paul Johnson site and I let him know hey we're good to go then he goes ahead looks at all of my logs and then revises the tune adjusts anything you might ask me some questions but as far as the actual process is concerned he's just gonna go ahead and make some revisions to the logs send me back a new flash file and then we go ahead and do this process all over again but the tune feels really really good like I'm not gonna lie this tune actually feels really really nice it definitely feels like it's pulling a lot cleaner up top so I'm really curious to see what the actual data log looks like um, like I said we'll be back with you guys in a couple days just wait on the revision and then free flash <laughs> All right, all 
right. New day. New map is in from Mr. Paul Johnson. Let's go ahead and put this thing into accessory mode. I've actually been flashing with the mobile setup lately. I really like it. All right, so here's everything we need. Um, we are ready to flash this. Let's get her flashed. Yeah, it's super convenient flashing with the, uh, the phone <laughs> rather than the laptop. It's nice to have that. It's actually two days later from when we last flashed. Um, Paul Johnson actually sent me another map the day after I flashed with the logs. So actually it might have been the same day. So in general, the process has been great. It's been really, really fast. Um, the maps both feel really good. I, I honestly get these, the Kerry Jordan map and the Paul Johnson map, like both of them are considerably better than an OTS map. And they're also very similar. Like they both feel really good. I'm trying to distinguish the differences and it's it's quite hard. So I think that these tuners, once you get into custom tuning at a certain level, they're they're all they're all pretty similar. We will, however, be going to the dyno at the end of this whole thing and comparing the graph from the Paul Johnson tune to the graph of the Kerry Jordan tune. Now, something that we will need to take into consideration is the heat. The heat was really, really hot the day we went for the Kerry Jordan tune. So Ideally, you would want to go on a really hot day for the Paul Johnson tune just to make sure that things are kind of the same conditions. But at the end of the day, I will get John's opinion from CES and actually have him kind of tell me what he thinks, which tune looks better to him, which one feels better to him. So that's kind of my plan of attack with this. Um, I think we're almost at the end of these revisions. My only thing that I would say as a consumer who is buying these maps is I think it would be more beneficial for the tuner to speak to the customer a little bit more about what they are actually revising. I know that these tuners work with a lot of people, so like there's a lot of back and forth, and sometimes that can just get kind of monotonous over time when you're dealing with that many people and that many tunes and that many revisions. But I do think it would be beneficial for all parties if they just kind of talked about like, hey, you know, we saw that this at this point in your RPMs, the car was kind of doing this, so we changed this. It would just be kind of nice to like have a little bit of insight as to what was being changed because I feel like in these custom tunes, there's really not a whole lot of like communication. It's just like, here's your new file. Okay, go make new logs. For like educational purposes, it's nice to know like what was changed. So that's really my only constructive criticism. Um, other than that, both tunes and both processes are very similar and they've been great so far. So we just flashed this new map. Um, I'm not sure how many more revisions we have left, but we're gonna go ahead and go through third, fourth, and fifth gear from 2000 all the way up to 6,500 RPMs. So you're basically starting at 2000 and third, rip it all the way through third, rip it all the way through fourth, and then try and get all the way through fifth. Um, I ran out of road last time, but I did get close to it. So after that, we'll go ahead and let Paul Johnson know that the logs are ready, and I think we'll get a new revision, and we'll go from there. One thing that is interesting is on both of these custom maps, when I go to my sport displays, they only go to 400 horsepower. When I'm on OTS, stage two, that goes up to like 480. So that's kind of weird. I don't know why, for whatever reason, that's the case. <laughs> We're heading out to the road right now, in the middle of nowhere, zero traffic, it's early in the morning, and that way I can get my data log in safely. data log successful felt good got everything we needed I was able to string out that fifth gear a little bit longer this time the first log I was really only able to get up to like 6,000 rpm because I just ran out of road all right so I will see you guys when we get the revised map back and we will go ahead and do this whole process all over again reflash and relog all right and just like that so it's actually only been like an hour and we already have a new map back, a revised map to flash. Go back into my map here and then flash now. So not to state the obvious, but this is like incredibly fast. I just logged this morning and not even like two hours later I received an updated map. So that's like crazy, crazy fast for a revision on a tune. All right. So this is now flashed. Let's go ahead and data log again, send it back. Uh, you guys know the drill already. Damn, dude. This thing
thing is feeling really peppy. <laughs> like the torque is definitely, definitely up there. Sounds good too. I'm really liking the OTS Burble setup on this map. It's extremely reserved. And to be honest with you, I, I much prefer it over the, the super obnoxious uh, hot boy Burbles. So we got that one finished up. So at the top of third gear, there seemed to be a little, like a slight hesitation. Um, I'm not sure what that was about. It was kind of weird. It felt, it wasn't a misfire or anything. It just kind of felt like it fell on its face a little bit. And that, and I definitely did not feel that in the previous flash, uh, the previous map. So I'm sure they'll be able to see it in the uh, data log. So when I send the logs back to Paul this time around, I'll probably just leave a note in there that there was just a slight hesitation at the top of third gear. We're talking like 5,500, 6,000 RPMs to like 6,500 RPMs. It's very, very slight hesitation. So I'll send these back over to Paul Johnson. We'll see what he says. Probably gonna end up getting another revision. And um, yeah, just do this party all over again. <laughs> see you guys soon. All right, friends and family, it is a new day. It is quite possible we're making the longest tuning video ever known to man. I don't think I need to tell you how this goes. <laughs> We've done this enough times now. New map is ready. And flash now. Confirm. Good morning, guys. So I'm not sure which revision we're on right now. I think it's, I think it's five. Um, I do like the fact that he's making a lot of revisions. This is telling me that he's like actually doing work to the the, uh, the maps and he's actually putting in some some feedback and some changes that I think are actually going to help the car. Let's go ahead and data log this and then send it out to Paul Johnson and we'll get, I'm sure we'll get a revised one back or we'll get some notes or we're done. We'll find out. Also, side note, I think I'm going to, as you can see, I'm running my ethernet cable here all around and it's just not, not an ideal setup. I think I am gonna go ahead and like actually wire this through the back of the dashboard so you can't see it and have it come out here so it's like nice and clean. Then, uh, then we can just continue to do this with ease. <laughs> Sounds so good. Sounds so good right now. I'm really liking the burbles on this map, man. So I don't know if you guys heard that, but as soon as we got into fourth gear, uh, it started breaking up. And I think it was, I'm pretty sure that was a misfire. So I just let off completely, let off. I'm not gonna run it through a misfire. I'm gonna shoot this log over to Mr. Paul Johnson and just have him take a look at it. I'll just add in a note like, hey, looks like we had a little bit of a misfire or some kind of issue as soon as we went into fourth. I mean, it could be numerous things, guys. It could be spark related, fuel related tune related so we're gonna have to dig into it a little bit further and um yeah see what he says let you guys know yes sir new morning new map up and at him all right so we received our new map from mr paul johnson mr f80 paul we were having an issue with the fuel pump the stock fuel pump um it was actually crashing that's what that that's what that feeling, that sputtering, that noise was when I went into fourth gear and it just kind of like, <laughs> just kind of like seized up on me. That was the fuel pump, just basically shitting the bed. So it's not, uh, it's not destroyed or anything. It's probably not good for it, but I think we're just, we're trying to push a little too much boost. So uh, we, we pulled back on the boost a little bit 
and then this should be a fresh tune. We're gonna go. We're gonna go try it out right now, and hopefully we get through the uh, through the gears all right. Everything else feels really good. The tune overall feels great. I think, like I've mentioned before, like people just have different goals when it comes to really high horsepower or like just a super clean tune, reliability, and stuff like that. So I'm basically trying to like find that middle ground, which is like the sweet spot that everyone's trying to find between good power and reliability. This overall has been a great experience with Paul Johnson. He's a little more in depth, and he takes a lot more time going through the tunes. I actually went through the actual graph and looked at the ignition timing all the way through and it's like dead even. So you can see that he went in and manually adjusts the uh, the timing, which is a big deal, especially when you get up top. Like I always had that like breaking up up top because the timing was just all over the place. And the timing was getting pulled because the ECU is too smart and this car is just freaking, <laughs> this cars are really smart, which is a blessing and a curse. So I don't know what revision we're on or how far we are into this, but I think we're pretty much there, pretty much dialed in. I'm gonna go ahead and log this one, uh, bring you guys along for the ride obviously and send it over to Paul and then we'll see we'll see where we're at some of you guys are probably gonna wonder well John why don't you just upgrade the fueling now or put in your meth kit now or upgrade your turbos now the reason that I'm doing these different tunes on this stock setup is because I want to give people an example of what it would actually be like if they used this tune on their car on a stock setup the obvious route that we are taking is going to be fueling upgraded big turbo, all that stuff. That's the obvious route that we're taking. But I wanna be able to make this content for people who don't have that, because that's really gonna be like the majority of the customer base is wondering, you know, hey, how far can I go with the stock setup? So that's why I've been making the content without upgrading that stuff. After this tune, after this tune right here with Paul Johnson, we're going upgraded fueling, upgraded turbos, and I'm putting in my meth kit. Just because we're really at the limit right now, and if I go any further, I'm probably just gonna start breaking stuff. <laughs> so I just wanted to give you guys an example of how far you can really go with the N55 stock, just full bolt-ons, but stock fueling, stock turbo, stuff like that. So that data log is complete. Uh, that felt a lot better. There was a, like just a very, very slight hesitation or like hiccup right in fourth gear. I think that this fuel pump is on its way out. That's what I think. I've put probably over 50 different tuning maps on this car, like in the past three or four months. And I've definitely been driving the heck out of this car, like driving it really hard. And obviously we're pushing the boost super, super hard as well. I think that the, uh, I think the fuel pump on this thing is just about ready to, I think it's had it today. So once we finish up this tuning with uh, Paul Johnson, I'm gonna get fueling dialed in right away. That's it's just gotta be next. It's gonna we're gonna have to do it inevitably anyway, so we might as well do it now so the car runs right and better and actually has the fuel to back up a lot of the power that we that we want. The fueling is only gonna help the car. That and meth, I mean, it's only gonna help the car regardless of big turbo, small turbo, whatever. Fueling is only gonna make our lives easier, so it's like we might as well just take care of it and do it. I'm gonna shoot these logs over to Paul Johnson, let him know that they're up and ready to go, and I'll let you know what he says. Holy. You guys won't believe it. You guys won't believe it, but we finally finished the video. <laughs> This has been a long one. Finally, we have ourselves the last map. So this is obviously a longer video, and if you have made it to this point, to the end of the video, please do say down below that I am a real one. For some people, they don't wanna watch these longer videos. For those of you that do, thank you again for the continued support. And in the name of research and science, I am of course going to go back to the dyno with this setup and We'll test it out. We'll see how much power it does. I gotta grab some coffee and um, yeah, so we just flashed the final map. That is it, we don't need to data log anymore. So many flash tunes, I don't even know how this car is supposed to feel anymore. <laughs> I feel like we've done so many different maps on this car in such a short amount of time. That just shows you like how incredibly easy it is to flash your car nowadays with these tunes. I've just been doing it constantly for like two months straight. <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily good for the car. I mean, we've been running a lot of boost on this car, and I think that's kind of why my, my fuel pump is eh, slowly starting to go out, but we're gonna upgrade that anyways, so. That's right, baby. Wake him up, wake him up. Sounds good, man.
I'm loving the way this thing sounds. Also, look at how clean my Alcantara looks. Just used that Sonax cleaner the other day. Finally had a chance to properly clean it while it was actually dirty, because I actually used it for a while. But yeah, man, that stuff works. It works. It also just changes the feeling of it, too. It brings back all those little fibers that make it feel a little more like cushy. It's nice. Sonax, you guys, check that stuff out. If you've got Alcantara, I use it on everything. I use it on the boot, shift boot, steering wheel. Works well. All traffic must halt. Let these little guys go. Well, you know how cute they are. Look at them. Look at these little guys. Oh, dude. Sock doping today. Damn, someone was getting classy on some $28 Riesling in the parking garage. Sheesh, calm down. Well, folks, she drives amazingly well. Looks a little weird without a lip on the front. <laughs> I ordered a lip, I ordered a lip. I got one coming. All right, so yes, if you've made it this far, I just have to thank you because not a lot of people like these longer videos, but I just wanna make sure that I cover as many bases as possible, leave no questions unanswered. So just to recap, both tuners, fantastic. To be honest with you, they're, they're both great. I personally feel like F80 Paul put a little more time and attention into my tune. Kerry Jordan, I only had uh, two flashes and then it was back to me. I mean, some people could say, well, maybe he just tuned it better or faster. Sure, maybe that's the case. I just feel like F80 Paul spent a little more time and like consideration on the tune in general. Remember you guys, I did not tell these tuners I was making these videos. I was not paid to make these reviews. This is just me giving you my honest and authentic opinion on both of the tunes. So in conclusion, Paul Johnson, uh, he did a really good job. The car feels absolutely amazing. It sounds really good. Really what is gonna matter the most is going to the dyno, which yes, is going to happen next. So we got a dyno appointment next week. I'm gonna go to the dyno again and put this thing back on the dyno with the Paul Johnson tune. I'm gonna show you guys the Kerry Jordan dyno runs that we have here. So technically I actually lost a little bit of horsepower with the Kerry Jordan tune and I gained about 30 foot pounds of torque. On the stock OTS map, I'll put that up right here on the dyno. We did just over 400 horsepower. So if you're just looking for easy bang out of the buck, I mean OTS is the way to go. A custom map is gonna get your tune a little more fine tuned, a little more detail tuned, basically made for exactly how you're car is modified that's why they're so important to go with the custom tunes if you're willing to do that and you're taking it a little bit more seriously so like I said we're gonna hop back over to the dyno next week and then we'll see the numbers and that'll kind of tell us that'll give us a good idea of which tuner we're gonna end up going with as you guys saw in the video the high pressure fuel pump was crashing that is probably because we've been pushing so much boost through that fuel pump over the past three months. I've really just been putting that thing to the test and it's not its not meant for that. So we are gonna upgrade all the fueling, we're gonna do the meth kit, and eventually we'll do the big turbo. I think the fueling and the meth kit are gonna come first and we'll just work our way up to the upgraded turbo. I would ideally like to get the meth kit and the fueling done before we go to the track. That would just be nice to have. If we don't, we don't, whatever. When the track opens, we go. That's all there is to it. All right, so I told you guys I'd give you a timeline breakdown of everything that we did in this uh, map flashing in this tune. So I actually purchased the map on the 28th of July and I sent over my custom map request to Paul Johnson on the 28th and then they took a few days to confirm everything make sure all my information was correct and I received my first map on the 31st so a couple days later I received the first map go ahead and flash it on the second so I actually took a few days to flash it I had some stuff going on I end up flashing it on the second and we actually go back and forth about three times on the second so right away I kind of figured out that Paul Johnson is is fast his revisions are very quick and he sends them back to you within the same day um, most of the time within the same hour so you'll go back and forth with them quite often but I think that's good it, tells me that he's taking a little bit more time looking into the tune and actually making the minor adjustments that a proper custom tune for your car needs. I received another map, took a couple days for me to flash it. I reflashed on the fourth. We go back and forth on the fourth a few times. In between the fourth, the sixth, and the seventh, uh, the eighth, all the way up to the 11th, there were a couple of days in there where I wasn't flashing. We went back and forth a few times. I think it was five total. So when it came down to revisions, it looked like we were right around eight revisions or so. 
but I feel better about having eight revisions and knowing that a lot of time and attention was put into my tune. It really felt like Paul Johnson took his time to make sure that this tune was correct and good for my car. So overall, his turnaround times are really good. Base map came in a couple days after that. We just flashed back and forth within hours. Honestly, a very easy and painless process with Paul Johnson, highly recommended. But hopefully this video helped you guys make your decision. If you are looking to work with Kerry Jordan or maybe Paul Johnson or an OTS map, hopefully this video helped steer you in one of those directions. Honestly, when it comes down to all of this stuff, you're splitting hairs. I feel like all of them are, are really good. Your car is obviously gonna run better on some of them. And that's really what I was looking for. Like what is the cleanest and best tuned map for my car right now with all the mods it currently has, which also might change in a month as we add things or take things off. That all might change. If you guys did make it this far, please comment down below. John, I am a real one and I appreciate you guys so much. But you guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do subscribe, comment down below, like this video, hit that bell notification. Just like that, this video is over. We are out. Peace.